hello it is i cabria finally back with the video i've been mentioning for days um my may book release haul video which is where i show you the books that i got that came out this month well now it's last month because the video's late but finally getting around to do it I, I knew i had to do it today or else i probably wouldn't have done it because i just don't i still don't feel well but um let's see i try to show y'all books that come out i try to show you the books in order when they came out so i'm going to try to start with the books that came out may 4th 2021 um so we're going to start with counting down with you from what i know of this book it's a fake dating um scenario i hate saying au for books when it's not like an alternate university it is just the university so i don't want to say AU, but it's basically a fake dating au where it seems like what's the main character's name karina um is fake dating this guy named ace for some reason um and they're supposed to be doing it for 28 days um, but of course, it seems like they eventually fall for each other. Doo -doo -doo. The front cover says, a lot can change in 28 days. How do you make one month last a lifetime? And the back says, I know I'm pushing it. This friendship, this fake romance, all of it breaks unspoken rules. Spending time with Ace alone, flirting when no one is looking, accepting his invitation to prom. None of it is allowed. Even three weeks is too many. So, I love fake dating scenarios, and I feel like there are so many books coming out this year where fake dating is a major theme of the story. And I've already read two of those this month. Um, one of which were also was also released this, this month. But yes, I also love this color, the color scheme on the cover and just the cover in general. And of course, the blue inside cover, because blue seems to be a popular thing for book covers this year then we have all kinds of other and i didn't like this cover at first because it, it looks really trippy and it wasn't until my friend pointed out this was a whole face that i started to like it and like kind of understand it better but i didn't like it at first but now that i i see that there's a face in it i don't know how i missed that but now that i see that there's a face in it i like it more um because it seems less trippy now that i think i get some idea of it and this of course is the inside cover it's purple if the next one gives you pink, it'll make the bike black. Um, I'm gonna purposely try to see if I can find one that's pink though. No, I don't think I'll figure it out. Um, but basically, this one seems to be Jules is the main character. He's starting off at a new school. Um, and cause and he's gay. Um. And he's trying to keep his head down but wants to make the basketball team. But of course there's another dude who's starting at the same new school. Um and of course they rock each other's world. Um I have no better idea how to better how to explain that to you. I really need to get better at explaining these books. I'd be really happy when I could finally do that. But anyway, um I'm slick scared to read this book because I think this is the book. I was super excited for this book, but I think one of the bookstagrammers that I follow mentioned how hard it was to get through this because there's a lot of trigger warnings. So if this is the same book that I'm thinking about, I'm scared to read it. Um, This and another book that came out this month, I know that one definitely a lot of people said there's a lot of trigger warnings in it. So, but I'll mention it when I get to it. So that's all kinds of other. <laughs> then we have When You Get the Chance. Now this one I'm super excited about and it's super strong. I meant to show you, I meant to choose another book that was pink. Oh well, I'm sure one of the books by the end of this has a pink cover. Um, and by that, I mean like the inside cover of this one is gray. Or gray is one of my favorite colors. So, anyway, I get off topic way too easily. But I love this. I love that there's a rainbow road. And the front cover says pride could be the time of their lives if they can figure out how to get there. Um, so basically these two cousins they live on opposite coast and haven't seen each other since they were kids but they reunite because of a funeral um find out they're both queer
um and because of a lot of things to build up to it eventually they try to find themselves i assume new york because or toronto they try to find themselves somewhere yes they're trying to go to toronto <laughs> for pride sorry i was confused but anyway yes they try to get to toronto for pride if they can figure that out next up this is a book i know usually i from the past few months i have not read most of the books or any of the books that have come out that month but i'm trying to do better and i have read this next book i literally read this like two days ago meet you diary um by emory lee this is a pink cover but that's not what i was talking about mm, i mostly enjoyed this book i think i got really tired i was really tired like a third of the way through well not a third like two thirds of the way through it and it just I was like can you get to the point already but I adore most of the characters the main character he's so frustrating sometimes I just want to I just want to strangle Noah sometimes he's just one of those characters that you're like oh my god but I love I adore his brother Brian Brian deserves the world deserves the entire he when it comes to LGBT things, he's a little confused, but he always got the spirit and he always there for his brother. And I, I adore Brian wholeheartedly, so he deserves everything. He deserves to be protected. I also adore Devin, which is another character who uses E in pronouns. I adore Devin. Devin is everything. And Becca, Noah's best friend, I adore her. She's she's great. She's a great friend. Noah, though, sometimes I just want to strangle him. Um, But this is... Oh... There's also fake dating in this one. This wasn't even the book I was talking about earlier. But there is also fake dating in this one. Noah runs a meet cute diary where he posts made up meet cutes with um about trans people. So he could give hope to people and be like, hey, here's some hope that even as a trans person, you can have your happy ending or whatever. You can have your meet cute and have a happily ever after. And of course, people are like, some someone is like, this is fake. So then he fake dates drew i think drew he fake dates drew to um convince people that this is real and then of course turns into real dating however that's a twist um ah, no i hate dropping my books this is the inside cover it's like uh i don't know how to describe covers colors that aren't the most basic color um but yes, I did read this one, and it was mostly good. I enjoyed the other characters. Do -do -do. We also have any place but here. Um, I don't even remember what this one is about. Um, that's what Jess said to me. I was the ground. She was the rain. I wasn't anything until she woke me up. Oh, I do remember. Okay. So basically, June can't imagine her life without her best friend. She was only somebody when she was with June. And she doesn't know who she is without her. But when she's expelled and then forced to move to go to a whole other school, you know, she's away from Jess and she's miserable. And then she meets a boy. They become friends. Things, you know, go further than that. And when she starts questioning how she really feels for Jess, if it's more than just friendship, Jess pulls away. And so June doesn't know what to do from then on there. So, yes. Um, I'm really excited for this. I wish I had thought to pull out the pre-order incentives. I love pre-order incentives every time. Like a lot of authors would do if you pre-order a book, there are incentives and they mail them to you. And this one has some really cool pre-order incentives. And I love when authors write my name. So, like, I was so giddy when... I love seeing authors like actually write my name. I don't know why that's such a big thing for me, but I love it. Anyway, but I don't feel like getting up to go get it. One day I should just make a video for like all the pre-ordering senses, but I feel like that would take so much time and I wouldn't have had the books with me because half of them are in storage. This one though, okay, this book, the ones we meant to find, I wasn't going to pre-order this book and I didn't pre-order this book. I wasn't going to get this book, one, because I kept forgetting it was coming out into half the time I don't care about sibling stories um 
a lot of times I don't really care what happens in sibling stories. I feel like this video is gonna go so long and I'm so sorry. But this was Owl Crate's May book choice. Um and I'm kinda happy about it because I wasn't expecting this to be like an Owl Crate pick. Because I'm so used to Owl Crate, at least because I've only been subscribed to Owl Crate since January. So most of the books we've gotten were like a super fantasy or whatever. And so it surprised me that they chose this because I started holding off on pre ordering books until May, till Owl Crate declares their next month's theme, which takes forever. So I don't constantly end up with two of the same books because that's what happens a lot of the time. But I didn't have to do it this time because this was their book and I wasn't going to pre-order this. But I am obsessed with this cover. I, like I said, I wasn't that interested in this until I actually got it and saw their cover. And I don't know what all they did was change a couple colors because this is like the design of the original cover. And all they did were cha was change a couple covers and yet I, I've been geeking out over this book for weeks. It's so pretty to me. I am so genuinely obsessed. And like... Okay, this is the full design Owl Crate did because, of course, this is an exclusive edition to Owl Crate. So this is the Owl, the exclusive full design they chose. These are the end pages, first of all. I don't know if this was something specific to Owl Crate because they didn't mention it or if this is what's in, like, all of the editions, but, like, I'm obsessed with it. And then, of course, because it's an Owl Crate book, it is signed as all of the Owl Crate books are. Um, but like, look at that. That's so freaking pretty. I have been gushing over this for so long. I don't know. It's just beautiful. Anyway, I'm completely off topic. So basically in this story, doo -doo -doo, it's been three years and 17 days since C woke up on the shore of an abandoned island. She doesn't know where she is or what her life was like before. But she has a single memory that she has a sister and it's up to her to escape the island and find her. And then a word away, of course, the sister is a STEM prodigy, is also looking to escape from the science she once believed in and from her home. The Eco City's Earth's last unpop unpolluted inhabitants are meant to be a sanctuary from for those from deserving lineages, for those committed to planetary protection, but instead they're populated by people willing to do anything for refuge, even lie. After a series of man-made disasters rocked the planet, Casey must decide if she's ready to use science to help humanity even though it failed the people who mattered to her mother. Yes. Oh, this is from the author of Descendant of the Crane, which I've heard about, but I never actually, like, read, or I don't even know what it's about, but I heard a lot about it. Anyway, I'm obsessed with this cover. Um... I just anyway okay let me stop let me move on because I need to um what's next what's next we're still on May 4th by the way we have Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller this is the same author of what was it? is it it's I have it but I haven't read it I'm pretty sure it's like shadow shadows between us okay I knew it I knew it was something my friend bought that for me for my birthday last year no I have not read it but I need to because I'm excited for it but anyway this is blood of secrets um main character Ziva prefers metal to people she spends her day tucked away in her forge, safe from society and the anxiety it causes her, using her magical gift to craft, to craft unique weapons imbued with power. She receives a commission from a powerful warlord. The result is a sword capable of stealing its victim's secrets. Yada yada yada. When Ziva learns of the warlord's intentions to use the weapon to enslave all the world under her rule, she takes her sister and flees. Joined by a distractingly handsome mercenary and a young scholar with extensive knowledge of the world's known magics, even her sister set out on a quest to keep the sword safe until they can find a worthy wielder or a way to destroy, destroy it entirely. I am also obsessed with this cover, first of all. 
it's so pretty there was also a pre-order pre-order incentive for this and it was a sword necklace and it's so pretty anyway i'm spending too much time on each of these now this book realm breaker this is by a popular author victoria a aveyard but i've never read any of her works nor have i really cared because she wrote the what was it the red queen series yeah the red queen series and i've never really cared like it was so popular and i want to read it one day maybe but it's not i don't know but this sounded super interesting when i was i first heard about it look how thick it is and also i didn't show you the inside cover the blade of secrets like look at that i love when books have things etched inside of it you know and also the spine i am obsessed sorry i forget to show the spines and the cover sometimes but i thought about it because i was going to show you this one also this has a map inside of it so this is just basic black but like the end pages are a map and i love books with maps so i forget about them sometimes but yeah so this one by this popular author a squire the survivor of a failed quest an immortal timeless and unfathomable an assassin skilled and heartless an old sorceress holding secrets behind your teeth and a pirate's daughter the ward's last hope the heroes are gone but the fight to save the world has only just begun save the world or end it and that also the cover it's so pretty i, I just love swords to be honest um and it's so pretty and i feel like it was only right to like bring them up one after another um so this sounds a lot more interesting to me than her red queen series to be honest but moving on we have indivisible which is something else that i one kept forgetting was coming out and two was not going to pre-order but it was rainbow crates may book um which I only got a few days ago because my rainbow crate only came a few days ago as you saw um but yes this one is about mateo garcia and his younger sister sophie have been taught to fear one word for as long as they can remember deportation the worry that their undocumented immigrant parents could be sent back to mexico always lingered in the back of their minds even though mom and pa have been in the united states for a long time they have american-born children and their hard work is a good neighbors when mateo returns from school one day to find his parents have been taken by ice he realized that his family's worst nightmare has become a reality of sure, unsure of who can he i'm sorry unsure of who he can trust mateo with draws from even his closest friends and he tries to keep his family together with his parents fate and his own future hanging in the balance mateo must figure out who he is and what he is capable of even as he's forced to question what it means to be an american a son a brother and a friend now i know that i've been reading like parts of the last few summaries or whatever but i felt like this one was super important to read because i didn't know how else to better describe it and i felt like this book was really important it is really important that's the inside cover um and that's one of the end pages is there no it's not also for you but um you know this story is really important and i don't know what else i can say to it but i feel like it's important we get more stories like this um and face the harsh truths of them and i kept forgetting it was coming out um, I think part of it is just because I get scared to read, like, super, you know, powerful stories that I know are going to hurt. Um, but they're important, so I can't wait till I read it. Um, and I definitely think it's important that other people pick it up, too. Then we have Better Than the Moves. Now, these two books over here, the next couple i didn't even know they came out in may i literally just looked them up before this video i was like maybe i should see if these came out because i just got these from a bookstore not even knowing that they had just come out um but this is better than the movies um a yellow cover bridget jones plus mark darcy harry plus sally tom hanks plus everyone 
Liz Buxom, Buxbaum, Buxbaum, plus question mark. Um, Liz Buxbaum has always known that Wes Bennett was not boyfriend material. You would think that her next door neighbor would be a prom candidate for her romantic com com comedy fantasies. But Wes has only proven himself to be a pain in the butt ever since they were little. Flash for 10 years. So basically, I think maybe they fake date, either they fake date or at least they fake friend so she could get another dude to be interested in her and of course they fall in love. And if you can tell, those are popular 80s tropes. Um, pretty sure that's Dirty Dancing and say anything or something i forget which movie that's a part of and of course kissing in the rain what's more cliche than that anyway yes i saw it and i really liked the cover so that's the only reason i got it take me home tonight um, i heard a lot about this that's why i got it i don't really actually know what it's about two girls one night zero phones Cat and Stevie, best friends, theater kids, polar opposites, have snuck away from the suburbs to spend a night in New York City. They have it all planned out. They'll see a play, eat at the city's hottest restaurant, have the best night ever. What could go wrong? Well, a lot. Kind of a lot. They're barely off the train before they're dealing with destroyed phones, family dramas, and unexpected Pomeranians. Over the next few hours, they'll have to grapple with the old flames, terrible theater, and helpful cab drivers. But they're also... They... Brr, but there are also cute boys to kiss, parties to crash, dry cleaning to deliver, don't ask, and the world's best museum to explore. Over the course of a wild night in the city that never sleeps, both Cat and Stevie will get a wake-up call about their friendship, their choices, and will finally discover what they really want for their futures. That is assuming they can make it to Grand Central before the clock strikes midnight. I think I'm going to just start doing that. It's just at this point reading the summary because I don't know how to describe it to you. But also, look at this cute little Pomeranian. One of my best friends is a Pomeranian. Um, I used to be terrified of Pomeranians because when I was little, and I used to go to my grandmama's house all the time. And she had these two little evil Pomeranians, and they were evil. And I remember one day, they each took a side of my pants leg, and they ran around in circles until I spun around and fell. And I've been terrified of Pomeranians for years. I was terrified of them for years, even though they're just little. But I was a little kid, and them, uh, them dogs were evil. Um, ooh, lucky girl. This one I already knew about. Um, of course, I have a signed book plate because I was one of the pre-order incentives and they had a few stickers and a bookmark and stuff. And this is pretty thin. This is about, you know, what would you do if you won the lottery? Um, but basically, she lies about her age. She enters this lottery thing. Um... I, I had realized I didn't show you this, but I'd never realized that the inside cover, yeah, this is the inside cover to take me home tonight. I haven't looked at it, so I didn't realize that this was on the inside. That's really neat. Um, anyway, I love how I can get distracted in the middle of the next book because I remember that I didn't show you what was inside the first one. Oh, this video is going to be so long. I thought June was going to be long. And if this is long, June's going to be ridiculously long. Anyway. So, yeah. She lies about her age to enter for this lottery. Once lottery, but she can't claim the ticket because she's still a minor. But she doesn't trust anyone else, especially her mother, to claim it for her. And so, she's like, you know, is it really worth it? Um... Because, you know, if they find out she's at her age, she'll have to forfeit. But if her mother finds it, and then her mother will hoard it, and then buy more junk. And then, of course, her best friend is like, I'm going to find the winner. Um, And then her ex-boyfriend is suddenly back in her life and has big ideas what he'd do with the prize money. So it's suspicion and jealousy turned neighbor against neighbor and no good options for cashing the ticket come forward. Jane begins to wonder, could this money actually be a bad thing it's another yellow cover um yes 
I wouldn't know what to do with that situation either. Um, that's gotta suck. But I thought I wasn't sure if I wanted it because I'm like I don't really care about the lottery or. But I I thought it seemed really interesting though, so I was like, you know what, I'll give it a chance. So, there it is. These two though, I didn't know about it. Just got from the bookstore and only just now found out they also came on May fourth. Excuse me while I ugly cry. Now I heard a lot about this on Instagram, so I got it. Um, at a bookstore. So, Quinn keeps list of everything. For the day she's ugly cried to things that I would never admit out loud and all the boys she'd like to kiss. Her list, her list keep her sane by writing her fears on paper she never has to face them in real life. That is, until her journal goes missing. An anonymous account posts one of her lists on Instagram for the whole school to see and blackmail her into facing seven of her greatest fears or else her entire journal will go public. Quinn doesn't know who to trust. Desperate, she teams up with Carter Bennett, the last person known to have in her journal, in a race against time to track down the black miller. Together, they journey through everything Quinn's been too afraid to face, and along the way, Quinn finds the courage to be honest, to live in the moment, and to fall in love. So, um, this has sounded really interesting, and I kept seeing everybody post about it, and I wasn't sure I wanted it because, I don't know, I don't like blackmail. But, I was like, you know what? It does sound interesting, and... I don't know. Sounds better than fake dating. This one. And honestly, okay, I get so many books, just that one. But anyway, 10 Truths in the Day. This was another one that I was like, you know what? It sounds interesting. I'm not sure if I want it, but may as well. Um, For what I remember about this, anyway, she should be getting ready to graduate, but one class or whatever. One class or whatever is preventing it and so now she has to find a way to get credit i think it was like pe or something she has to find a way to get credit for it um before her mom finds out and so now she's lying to her mom and her friends about it or whatever because she does something for the golf course or whatever um so anyway i'm just gonna read it she'll need a graduation miracle all hands on deck okay Yeah, okay, so her unsigned PE form puts her in danger of not graduating. And she has one week to set things straight. So she volunteers at a local t golf tournament. But her mom has a tracker on her phone, so she tries to... Um... Trade phone phones with her friends. And they're supposed to go through the motions of playing Olivia. Playing her. Um, they're supposed to go through the motions of playing her so her mom doesn't find out she's at the golf course instead of, you know, partying for senior year. Um, yeah. So at first I was like, I don't think, I don't know if it's something I really want. I'm so picky when it comes to school, quite literally everything. So I was like, I don't know if this is actually something I genuinely want. But I was like, you know what, it does sound interesting. So I'll give it a shot. That's how most of these books end up here, actually. Is that, is this also this month? or is this the next month okay oh i skipped a whole okay lucky girl came out next week the week after this anyway now we're on may 11th anyway but i said lucky girl before some of the other ones but anyway they came on may 11th anyway then we have cool for the summer the only thing I remember about this is that the main character is bisexual. The guy of her dreams or the girl in her heart. The girl in your heart all the way. Go for it. It's one summer. You can't change it to a different person over the summer. Okay, wait a second. Anyway, forgot to show you this. And then pages are pink. Um, I also forgot to show you the inside of Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry. I think... That's just like whitish, like a whitish gray. And so, this is the inside of 10 Truths and a Deer. This is so hard to keep track of. And there's so many books. And this is getting so long. It should not take me this long to get through these books. Oh, well. But anyway, sorry. Back to Pool for the Summer. Larissa Bogdan 
dog Dan was supposed to spend her summer babysitting and book selling. Instead, she tagged along with her mom to the Outer Banks, working on her tan and making new friends. Now she's back and starting her senior year at Stratford High, only to face another unexpected turn. She's fatally, finally attracted the attention of superstar quarterback Chase Harding, the guy she's crushed on since middle school. Then Jasmine Killery shows up. Jasmine, who's supposed to be in North Carolina, not the U-Nork. I said U-Nork instead of New York. Not the New York City suburbs. Jasmine, who immediately entices Stratford's student body with her glittering beauty and casual cool style. Jasmine, who gave Larissa the three most perfect months of her life. But now Jasmine's keeping her distance, not even acknowledging their friendship, much less the hot summer nights they spent together. Larissa knows she should be glad to bury their secret, but she also knows she never felt more comfortable, more confident, more herself than when she was with Jasmine. What was supposed to be a playful fling became something much deeper than she could ever have imagined. If Larissa's finally got the guy, why can't she stop thinking about the girl? You know, times like this, times like this, I just wish people would be like, you know what, polyamory is the way to go. Let's have a three-way. Let's be a throuple. But instead, they make it a love triangle with the person has to choose and they choose and you're never satisfied fully. Um, at least I'm never satisfied fully because I feel like half the time it's a cop-out. Like, I don't like love triangles because either one of the guys is, like, really trash because it's usually a girl and two guys most of the time when I experience love triangles. But at least one of the dudes is trash, if not both of them. Or both of them are decent people and you gotta hurt one of them. Um, which is never, it's not, be, it's not any better. And then, yes. And then you could like both of them. You could like both of them so much. You could be like, I don't even know. And times like that. Times like that, especially when the two guys got chemistry, even if it's just friends, but like a throuple all the way. I don't know why they cowered out of this. It just upsets me so much. You know, the perfect solution, throuple all the way. Unless he sucks. I don't know if the dude sucks or not. But, because I haven't read it. But, I just feel like nine times out of ten, throuple fixes everything, every love triangle. But no, people are too cowardly. It's fine. Anyway. Next up, we have Illusionary, which is the sequel to Incendiary. And I forgot to bring Incendiary over here, and I'm too lazy to go do it. So this is the sequel to Incendiary. Um, I've been so excited for this. Incendiary was the book my other friend bought me for my birthday last year. Because um, I get so many books. And he's telling me, it's like, what do you want? And I'm like, a book. So they give me books, which is exactly what I it's exactly what I need and want. Anyway, um, Illusionary is the sequel. I haven't read Incendiary because it's a duology. And I don't like reading series until they're completed, like I keep telling over and over. Um, so I can't wait to actually read them and find out what the heck they're about. Look at that. That's the, that's the first cover. Anyway, um, did I show you the inside of... Um, I don't think I showed you the inside of this. Did I show you the inside of Cool for the Summer? Actually, I think I did, because I remember showing you the peak pages. And well, let me show you the inside of the movie of illusionary um it's like a burgundy which i like um i do really like the color burgundy it used to want my hair that color i love dedications i should have gone through all these dedications but now it's too late one day i'm gonna make a video of like all my favorite book dedications but anyway this one says for myself um these are the end pages which I like and there's also a map in here which I love and there's a prologue which I feel like we don't get prologues enough you know what I miss I miss books that used to have table of contents Ooh, there's a song anyway let me stop before I spoil stuff in this book when I haven't even read the first one um then we have son of the storm remember nothing about this i have no idea what this is about i just like this is a fire cover um in the city of basso in the city of basso donzo is a clever scholar on the cups of achieving greatness only he doesn't want it instead he prefers to chase forbidden stories about what lies outside the city walls the basso elite claim there is nothing of interest the city's immigrants are sworn to secrecy 
but when Donzo stumbles across a warrior wielding magic that shouldn't exist, he's put on a collision course with Vasa's darkest secrets. Drawn into the city's hidden history, he sets out on a journey beyond its borders, and the chaos left in the wake of his discovery threatens to destroy the Empire. Alright, alright, alright. I'm just obsessed with this cover, first of all. But also, this sounds super interesting. Part of me really hopes this is a standalone so I can read it without having to worry about waiting until the next book comes out. But anyway, this also has pre-order incentives. I do not remember what the pre-order incentives are. I just know that they, I forgot this even had it, pre-order incentives, but I know they emailed me and were like, hey, you forgot to put in your address. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Um, but yes. Do -do -do, moving on. Blackwater Sister, which also sounds super interesting. Um, when Jessamine Tao starts hearing a voice in her head, she chalks it up to stress. Closeted, broke, and jobless, she's moving back to Malaysia with her parents, a country she last saw when she was a toddler. She soon learns the new voice isn't even hers. It's the ghost of her estranged grandmother. In life, Ama was a spirit medium, avatar of a mysterious deity called the Blackwater Sister. Now she's determined to settle a score against a business magnate who has offended the god and she's decided just is going to help her do it whether just wants to or not drawn into a world of gods ghosts and family secrets just finds that making deals with capricious fears is a dangerous business but dealing with her grandmother is just as complicated especially when Ahmad tries to spy on her personal life threatens to spill her secrets to her family and uses her body to commit felonies as just fights for retribution for Ahmad she'll also need to regain control of her body and destiny or the blackwater sister may finish her off for good that sounds super interesting, but also, I already feel like I want to fight her Alma. I'm sure her Alma is a great person, and she wants justice, and I'm sure she cares, but oh my god, do I already want to fight her? Like, I hate people telling me what I can or cannot do to my body. I cannot imagine being controlled like that, and I hate people invading my personal space and my privacy, and I just, I just want to fight her. Anyway, I'm super excited about this, and also, this cover is freaking beautiful. Um, anyway, moving on. I like, she's like really obsessed with the cover. Um, anyway, so, then we have uh, Baby and Solo. Of course, I don't remember what it's about. 17-year-old Joel T has a new prescription for his therapist, a part-time job, the first step toward the elusive normal life he's been so desperate to live ever since the bad thing happened. Lucky for Joe, Royo Video is hiring. It's the perfect fresh start. He even gets a new name, dubbed Solo, after his favorite Star Wars character. Joe works his way up the not-so-corporate ladder without anyone suspecting what was wrong with him. That is, until he befriends Nicole, Baby Palmer, a smart-mouthed co-worker with, with the chip on her shoulder about well everything and the two quickly develop the kind of friendship movie montages are made of however when joe's past inevitably catches up with him he's forced to choose between preserving his new blank slate persona and coming clean and either way he risks losing the first friend he's ever had so this is set in the pop culture rich 1990s um since out of a cover is another yellow one i can't believe i'm only on the second week of books oh my god um yeah so that sounds interesting i don't remember what made me get this i just think it's not a goal <laughs> so i want to know what the bad thing is though not gonna lie i hate books that do that like i mean obviously i don't hate them but like i hate having to wait to find out what the bad thing is they'll mention it over and over like when the incident happened when this happened and i'm like when what happened just tell me already so anyway i'm interested in seeing what the heck that was um next up we have from little tokyo with love i kept forgetting this was the name of the full title and so the oh, it's been i hate when parts of the book get spent um for the longest i kept calling them little tokyo because i don't know how i could forget this full title but da -da. Da -da -da. so at first glance, Rika's life might seem like the beginning of a 
familiar fairy tale. After all, she's an orphan with two bossy cousins, a demanding job in the family business, and an ever-present feeling that she doesn't quite belong. But as a biracial girl with formidable judo skills and a fiery temper, Rika knows she's the least princess-like person in all of LA. So when a series of tantalizing clues spread out over her little Tokyo neighborhood seem to point to her mother being alive and a Hollywood movie star, Rika has to take a leap of faith, accompanied by cute actor Hank Chin, that a girl like her might deserve happiness too. But as their madcap quest brings her closer to the truth and closer to Hank, her own doubts and insecurities threaten to destroy everything. In the sudden fairy tale that's taken over her life, Rika must decide if she's destined for tragedy or brave enough to write her own happy ending. Which sounds super interesting. I'm really curious about the mom though, like, how are you alive and like not here for me? But I guess we'll see. And also, is this cover not everything? Is it not everything? Like, I love the colors. I love the little photos in the back. I'm super curious. Um So I think we got through all of May 11th and now it is time to move on to May 18th which we're gonna start with off the record and now this is by the same author who I think wrote I'm trying to remember the name of that book because I have it if it's the same author I'm thinking of let's see if they have her books in here yes full disclosure that is my heart I cannot think of the book I just remember that it was blue that's somewhere in my closet. Um, but this is off the record. Um, I am solely obsessed with this cover, and I knew that there was a buy up, which is what made me get it. Um, but let's start. At Josie the Journalist, sometimes it's hard to remember that your voice is important until the world reminds you. Ever since 17-year-old Josie Wright can remember, writing has been her identity, the thing that grounds her when everything else is a garbage fire. So when she went to contest to write a celebrity profile for Deep focus magazine she's equal parts excited and scared but also ready she's got this soon josie is getting off on a multi-city tour rubbing elbows with sparkly celebrities frenetic handlers stone-faced producers and eccentric stylists she even finds herself catching feelings for the subject of her profile dazzling young newcomer marius kennett josie's world is expanding so rapidly she doesn't know whether she's flying or falling but when a young actress lets her in on a terrible secret the answer is clear she's in over her head one woman's account leads to another and another. Josie wants to expose the man responsible, but she's reluctant to speak up, unsure if this is her story to tell. What if she lets down the women who have entrusted her with their stories? What if this ends her writing career before it even begins? There are so many reasons not to go ahead, but if Josie doesn't step up, who will? So, obviously it has a lot of Me Too themes, and I'm super curious um, how her writing will go, because it's a heavy topic. I get scared about heavy topic books, honestly. I get so scared of how they're going to go. But, uh, I got so much hope. Anyway, I'm obsessed with the inside cover. Because, as you know, I don't know if you can see it super well, but it says, I believe her. Which I am freaking obsessing over. And I love, like, the chapter heads and stuff. Anyway. This is going to be a really intense read, and I can't wait. Then we have... Up next, we have May the Best Men Win. And now, this is the other book that I was talking about where I don't think I'm going to read it because I was super excited for it, and it's, like, super cute. And after reading All for the Game series, I was like, as much as I don't care for sports, I wanted, like, some more All for the Game, gay, cute, sporty I almost cursed so I'm trying not to but yeah I was like I uh, definitely cannot wait but so many people when I was going through the reviews and I rarely go through reviews for books because I I'm not gonna be that um different mo person I'm not gonna do that but I do know that sometimes I do have different opinions and priorities than certain other people especially like this is one book to remember I love him but he is super harsh with his critiques on certain books. And I'm like, I don't understand what he got there because I love this book. But one person was talking about how manipulative and toxic and kind of horrible the main character is. And so I went through other reviews and like everybody was pretty much saying the same thing. Just like how horrible the main character is and how toxic and manipulative he is and how 
the book is not like a cute rom-com story it's kind of horrible so now I don't know if I'm gonna read it like I'm super disappointed that I got it and it was, I was so excited for it and now they're like no but I mean one day I might give it a chance just because you know I might see things differently but no nah, way too many people are saying that the main character is toxic and manipulative for me to trust that I like this book. This is the inside cover. And this is the summary, the summary page. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna read it, but I don't think I'm gonna read it because I this video is already super long and mm, I don't like this book. But if you want to pause and read it yourself, if you can, I wouldn't stop you. Okay, I'm tired of holding it. Anyway, moving on. Now this book, In the Ravenous Dark, I, when I tell you, I have been so excited for this book. This is by A.M. Strickland, and I own their book, Beyond the Black Door. I have, they use, I'm pretty sure they use they, them pronouns, I almost accidentally misgendered them, and I caught myself. They use they, them pronouns, just like I said, the author of Me, Kudari, uses E.M. pronouns. So far, I haven't, I hope. As far as I know, I haven't added these other books. I don't think I've used. I don't think I've used girl pronouns. I hope I have it. Um, but these are the only couple so far this month that I know of for sure use a different set of pronouns. But I've been so excited for this book. Beyond the Great Black Door, first of all, is one of the first handful of Ace Rec books that I've ever had, and um, I own that somewhere in my closet. And so this is another book. Also, I am obsessed with standalone fantasy. As much as I love a good series, I hate how much energy it takes to get to a se through a series. I hate waiting for the series to be completed. And A.M. Strickland doesn't do me like that. And they give you so many, so much queer rep. Like, both Beyond the Black Door and this, there is so much queer rep. And I've been told there's poly rep in here too. And like I said earlier in this video, I need more poly rep. Give me more throubles give me more like that's not necessarily something i need but it's something that i appreciate seeing more because i feel like okay i'm gonna say this real quick and i'm gonna keep moving on i don't feel like i don't know how i want to say it i just feel like that everyone i don't understand the need on hating on polyamorous folk because i feel like everyone has the capacity capacity to love more than one person and it happens all the time whether or not someone is polyamorous like you fall for two different people and people feel the need to choose and not that it's necessarily wrong to want to be with one person but i feel like if people thought more on it, it's not inherently wrong to be with multiple people as long as everybody is aware of the situation that's all i'm saying because people act like it's so wrong for somebody to be polyamorous acting like they've never cared for two people the same way and then having to choose between one of them you didn't necessarily have to choose depending on the relationship that's all i'm gonna say but i'm gonna move forward i'm super excited i've been so excited but i'm so scared to read it because once i read it you know there are so many books that i wish i could reread for the first time again and i feel like it's going to be one of those books and i'm terrified to read it because i don't want to sit there and be like man i wish i could read this for the first time again but it's so pretty and i'm so excited for this book and the inside is black and pages are purple um, I just realized that I've told you nothing about this book. Oh, also the spine I'm obsessed with. So I'm gonna read the summary because I don't know what else to tell you about it. And my legs are hurting from sitting here for 50 minutes. So I'm gonna move them. Um, power never dies and neither does desire. In Thinopolis, those precious few gifted with magic are assigned undead spirits who guard them and closely control them ever since Rowan's father died trying to keep her magic from this fate Rowan has hidden her magic, but when she ac accidentally reveals her powers to save a life, she's bound to one of the undead and thrust into a world of hellish intrigue and deception. Desperate to regain her independence, Rowan finds herself... Oh, Rowan. Okay. Sometimes I'm a little dyslexic. Rowan. Not Rowan, but that's a V. Rowan still finds herself falling in love with two people she can't fully trust. Lydia, a beguiling and rebellious princess struggling against her destiny, and Ivorilis, the handsome, powerful spirit with the ability to take control of Rovin, body and soul. Together, they uncover a terrible secret that would destroy everyone in Thinopolis. 
both the living and the dead. To save them all, Rovin would have to start a rebellion in both the mortal world and the underworld and find a way to trust the princess and the undead spirit battling for her heart if she doesn't decide to betray them first. Mm. The main character is pansexual. I also forgot to mention that because I'm panromantic. Asexual. A gray asexual, but like asexual is so much easier. Um, I told my aunt that for the first time today. I mean, she guessed a few years ago. Most of my friends guess that I'm pan and it's so funny. Like, it's just like they know. They're like, no, you're not bi. You're not Elizabeth. You're pan. And I'm like, how do y'all know? I don't know. It's so specific. I think it's funny. And so she guessed a few years ago and I never told her she was right or wrong. But she asked me today and I was like, yeah. And then I've never told her that I was asexual even though I felt like I should have a while ago because she kept pressuring me about sex and it was really annoying. But... I finally told her today, so I think that's cool. Um, but yes, Am Strickland's richly dark, richly dark imagined fantasy features court intrigue, a revolution that stretches across life and death, and a pansexual love triangle that will leave readers desperate to find out what happens next. And I don't normally read the part where like they describe the book itself, but I wanted to do it. But also, thus beyond the black door. There's asexual rep in that. I love A.M. Strickland so much. I've been so excited for this book. Anyway, then we have It Goes Like This. My legs hurt so much. I'm pretty sure there was queer rep in this. Sometimes you have to risk hitting repeat on heartbreak. Eva, Celeste, Gina, and Steph used to think their friendship was unbreakable. After all, they've been through a lot together, including the astronomical rise of moonlight, overthrow, the world famous queer pop band they formed in middle school never expecting to headline anything bigger than the county fair so yes yeah, so it is correct okay but after a sudden falling out leads to the dissolution of the teens band their friendship and eva and celeste starry-eyed romance nothing is the same gina and celeste step further into the spotlight stuff disappears completely and eva heartbroken takes refuge as a songwriter and secret online fangirl of her own band that is until a storm devastates their hometown bringing the four ex-best friends back together as they prepare for one last show, they'll, they'll discover whether growing up always means growing apart. And there's another yellow cover with purple in pages. Um, that sounds interesting. I have been finding more and more books about like growing up and whether or not that means you have to grow apart. Like this was that was then and this is now, or whatever it was called by S. E. Hinton that I mentioned in my may book red video it doesn't mean you have to grow apart when you grow up you know can you save it and i get scared of read, reading books like that after that book that i still wish i could go back and read that book but whatever anyway this sounds like it's going to be interesting and the cover is super pretty also the spine i forget to show the spine sometimes but that's pretty um interested to see where this goes but also super scared anyway then we have some girls do which is so gay look at how gay this looks i'm excited <laughs> oh i thought this was something different i flick my eyes to the track just in time to see the new girl finish first huh i guess she's actually good she folds her hands up o over her head as she walks her cheeks flush from the effort her chest heaving and then she looks right at me i swear to god the whole universe falls away and all I can think of is wanting. Ugh, I love a book about yearning. This is the inside cover before I forget. Um, can they go the distance together? Morgan, an elite track athlete, is forced to transfer late in her senior year after it turns out being gay is against her private Catholic school's code of conduct. Okay, before I go into a whole rant about this, I'm going to just say, I think that's the dumbest thing. I think it's the dumbest thing. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it my views on religion and how they handle things especially religious schools whatever i just think it's dumb that you that somehow being gay being who you are can be against the rules but whatever okay ruby loves nothing more than tinkering with her baby blue 1974 torino but most weekends she's stuck living out the dreams of her mother a former beauty queen by competing in local pageants morgan and ruby are drawn to each other and when they're together ruby begins to envision a future for herself she never thought possible while Morgan, out and proud and determined to have a fresh start, doesn't want to have to keep their budding relationship a secret, Ruby has never told anyone about the feeling she's denied herself for so long. 
This is by the author of Hot Dog Run, which I still don't own and don't know if I want. This one definitely sounds more interesting than Hot Dog Girl did to me. Um, it actually sounds really cool. And I love that this isn't one that's going to take forever for like the romance to start. Although, I do kind of hate when, and not like in terms of stories, but just like when people are like, I think people need to be more understanding of people in the closet, especially other queer people, like when it comes to relationships. Because I understand not wanting to have to stay in the closet when you're with somebody, but at the same time, when this is somebody's first chance of really getting to be with somebody, you know, and first time really accepting who they are, I don't think it's fair to be like, you know what, I don't feel like being with you because you're in the closet. I mean, I know that's not necessarily how this goes, but it's just something I think about sometimes. But, and then we have this book that I just talked to my aunt about today, Tokyo Ever After. Um, there's a really cute hand that was a pre-order incentive for this, so I'm excited about that. And this was also a part of Reese's book club, the, her YA book club that she just started a few months ago. Um, the end pages are green, inside is blue, and pages are green. Izumi Tanaka has never really fit in. It's not easy being Japanese American in her small, mostly white Northern California town. Raised by a single mother, Izumi or Izzy, because it's easier this way, has always felt it's been her and her mom against the world. But then Izumi discovers a clue to her previously unknown father's identity, and he's none other than the crown prince of Japan. Oh wow. Which means outspoken, irreverent Izzy is literally a princess. And whirlwind. Oh, I. Okay, I'm not finished with that, but I, I forgot that was why I was interested in this story, because it was, like, quite literally, um, Princess Diary. It's Tokyo's version of Princess Diary. And I forgot that that's what, first, like, months ago, when they first, I first started hearing people talk about this book, that's what got me interested. And I just stayed interested, even though I forgot what it was about. In a whirlwind, Izumi travels to Japan to meet the father she never knew and discover the country she always dreamed of. But being a princess is in all ball gowns and tiaras. There are conniving cousins, a hungry press, a scowling but handsome bodyguard who might just be her soulmate, and thousands of years of tradition and customs to learn practically overnight. Izumi soon finds herself caught between worlds and between versions of herself. Back home, she was never American enough. In Japan, she must prove she's Japanese enough. Will Izumi crumble under the, pr the weight of the crown, or will she live out her fairy tale happily ever after? I'm... Actually, I might make this the next book I read. I was wondering what I was going to read today. And this might just be it. Because actually, me and my mom were talking about it. She was like, I think I found this book you might be interested in. She said the name and I wouldn't pick it up. I was like, I already have it, ma'am. I already own it. Um, and have a really cute pen that came with it. But that's over there. And I don't feel like getting it. Um, But now I'm really excited about this. This might have to be what I read next. Um... And even though I obviously can't really fully, but like clearly I'm mixed. And I grew up in Memphis. And the Memphis is a predominantly black city. And I went to predominantly black schools. And I wasn't the only light skinned, but I was one of the few handfuls of them. And this, I was especially some one of the lighter ones. And so I was always being kind of teased or whatever, especially when I was really little. I was always teased about not being black enough or sounding white or talking white or even cursing white and I just because I talk super proper whatever much more proper than my mother and even now I don't really do it that much because I can when I need to like when I'm in a situation it's so funny when people point it out because I, I don't realize that I change how I talk when I'm around certain people because when I'm with my friends I don't talk really proper at all I'd be like ain't nobody talking to you <laughs> I talk like that but then when I'm around other people it wasn't until, because I worked at a daycare, and it wasn't until one of the moms talked about how proper I was talking that I realized that, like, I quite literally changed how I talk depending on where I am. But growing up, they, they always told me I talked white and I cursed white and everything. And then I moved to Murfreesboro, which is a predominantly white city. And I went to a predominantly white school, and I definitely wasn't white enough. Not that I tried to be, but, but here, I'm back in Memphis. In Memphis, I'm not black enough nor am I white enough but like and then I moved to a white city and the few black people there of course I still wasn't black enough but of course I wasn't white enough for the white folk um and it's just crazy how when you're mixed and you have these two different identities or you have these two different nationalities in you 
how both sides of them will feel like you don't fit in with them especially if you grew up in one culture that's a part of your identity and then you're trying to be you know find yourself more in your other the other part of your culture and they don't think you know you fit enough and that's just crazy to me um but yeah i just because in school they used to call me an oreo they used to call me a vanilla oreo they'd be like you, you listen to white people music you talk white you sound white and when i moved to murfreesboro everybody in murfreesboro was like you don't even sound like whenever they're like where are you from and i'm like i'm from memphis they're like you don't sound like you're from memphis so how do i how do i sound like i'm from memphis most of you people have never even been to memphis although that's not saying much because like half of murfreesboro half of the college i go to mtsu just, are people from memphis but that's crazy to me anyway so um this might be the book i read today i was gonna read something else or at least start something else but I've read four books so far this month. Be proud of me. Anyway, I got off topic. One of the books I read this month, actually the first book I read this month, this, I'm starting the May 25th week, and this is the first book I'm showing from this week. Um, but this is Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating. And I read this, so... This is the author's sophomore novel. She wrote The Hidden Wars, I think it was like 2019, it was released, and my friend bought it for me last year. I love when my friends buy me books. Um, one of my friends, Joe, they bought it for me last year. Um, and I was so excited for it, I really was. And then I finally read it earlier this year, me and two of my other friends, Timmy and Casey, we all read it. And all of us gave it about three stars. We were all super excited for it. And all of us just wasn't really feeling it. And I hate that because it's such a popular book. It's such a good book. But I, none of us could really get into it. We kind of hated all of the characters. I, The main character was kind of annoying. Her sister was kind of annoying. But like what sibling is it? The love interest. We couldn't stand the love interest. And then we hated all the characters you are actually supposed to hate. So when you hate all the characters it's hard to really enjoy the story. And I just feel like, I don't, I don't know what I felt like, but I wasn't completely into it. Um, but I was still super excited for this because more WNW, fake dating. Yes, of course. This is the book I was talking about that I read, another book about fake dating this month. Um, I also read another one. This came out last month, but like, this is, a, I, this is the book I read yesterday. This was the fourth book I read this month, and this was fake dating in it. So I read several queer fake dating stories but this one I enjoyed the characters a lot more in this story than I did I know this isn't even the book this isn't even the the video from me talking about the books I read but like this I enjoyed the characters much more than I did in the Hidden Wars but I feel like this this book specifically had much more unresolved issues than the last book did and I have to acknowledge that not all books need every single thing resolved there are things that you feel like it's an appropriate ending but you still you know aren't completely resolved so many in other aspects but so many of them i felt were unresolved and i just I, I just wasn't fully feeling it but anyway um honey and ishu they're both bengali one of them is muslim and one of them is indian um i think they're both bisexual Hani has a bunch of horrible friends and Ishu pretty much has no friends. Ishu is like super determined and she's like super smart and she's like I'm gonna do what I gotta do. So she because she wanted so badly to best her older sister and Hani has a whole bunch of terrible slick racist slick homophobic friends. Um, And they fake date both because Ishu needs to win hair girl and honey wants her friends to accept her as bisexual and stop trying to hook her up with dudes when she's not interested in the dudes right now so they date um and then of course they fall in love and thankfully honey drops her friends and Ishu realizes that she doesn't need to best her sister sorry spoilers um not major ones though anyway next book not my problem by Sierra Smith. This is the same author who wrote the Falling in Love montage, which I still have not read, but I own. So, um, I feel I quite literally have a list of authors 
that I need to read their first book of since they have so many of them are releasing their sophomore books this year. Um, but basically, the main character can fix anyone's life except her own, and she's great with the relationship by also. She's great with the relationship advice, except when it comes to her own relationship. Aiden has plenty of problems she can't fix. Her best and only friend grows more distant every day. Her mother's drinking problem is constant is a constant concern. She's even running out of outlandish diseases to fake so she can skip PE. But when Aideen stumbles on her nemesis, overachiever Miab Kowalska, in the midst of a full-blown meltdown, she sees a problem that, unlike her own disaster of a life, seems refreshingly easy to solve. Miab is desperate to escape her crushing pile of extracurriculars. Aideen volunteers to help by pushing Miab down the stairs. As planned, Miab sprints her ankles a free pass out of all sports PE classes and mandated yoga for relaxation. Problem solved, except for the witness who saw it all, a boy named Kavi who isn't exactly known for his discretion. And when he brings Aideen, another client, in need of her help, Aideen is in for a semester of ill-advised hijinks, a war waged over student council elections, and an unexpected chance in love. Fixing other people's problems won't fix her own, but it might push them, but it might be the push she needs to start. Sounds like a personal problem. Lucky for you, that's her specialty. I love this cover. And I'm actually super interested in this concept. Like, this is the first time I've released seen a concept that I like like this in a while. This is also burgundy. And I like this one. This is the first time I've really seen something more original than several of these books. Like, I'm not saying that they're not going to be great and that I'm not going to love and enjoy them, but this is one of the first times I've really seen a story concept like this and I'm super excited to get into it. Um, forgot to show you the... I think I forgot to show you the cover for this. It's purple. And I love the, the ink choice. But... Anyway, I'm pretty sure there's only one other book to show you, thankfully, because this video is so long. This is my longest video yet, and I thought I could get through this faster than I am. Um, I thought my June video was going to be an hour, but now it's probably going to be two. Um, anyway, E.K. Johnston's Aether Bound. There's a fine line between survival and cruelty. It's really thin. She is the same author who wrote, or they are the same author who wrote. Look at the author promo. Yes, okay, she uses she heard. Um, had to make sure. On the cover, it talks about her Star Wars series, but I don't know anything about that. I own a few of her books. I'm trying to remember what they're called. Um, but I'm gonna just look at her book page anyway. Ooh, there's a content warning. Oh, speaking of which, sorry I do this a lot. Something I do appreciate by, about Adiba, this author, is that she always includes, for most of her books, she includes content warnings. And so before you start the book there are content warnings um this book contains instances of racism homophobia specifically biophobia and lesbian phobia islamophobia toxic friendship gaslighting and parental abandonment i appreciate that she does this i didn't even notice she did it in the hint of wars until somebody else pointed it out um but she did it in this one too and i i really appreciate it. i don't really see that happening often um but anyway, this person, I didn't even realize, A.K. Johnston also included content warnings. This book contains a scene of medical violence. Character, characters also obsessed about food and con count calories. Is there not a page for her books? Oh. I guess there's not a page for her books. Okay, um, I'm gonna Google her, her books because she's written several that all sound really good and I haven't read them yet, but like, I was super excited for this one because all of her books seem so interesting actually, and I own several of them. Um, that in, that inevitable Victorian thing, I have that, the afterward, I have that, and either about, which is what I'm showing you now. Are those the only two? I thought I had another one, but I guess those are the only two I have. And now this is her third book I have. Anyway, let's get to the point. That's the inside cover. 
Could know Harlan's family has seen her as a waste of food on their long haul space cruiser ever since her genes revealed an undesirable mutation when she was only a small child. But 13 years later, her unique genetic makeup might be her chance to do much more than survive if she plays her cards right. During a routine stop at the space dock, oh, that's not a, I'm dyslexic. That's not a zero. I mean, an O. That's a D. Pint. So I'm assuming you pronounce her name Pint. During a routine stop at a space dock, Pint risks everything on a one-way escape plan. While on the run, she forms a lucky bond with the teenage heirs of the powerful family that runs the space station. And against long odds, she the trio hatches a scheme to take over the station and thwart the destinies they never wish for. Something I don't understand is why parents will force, like, will treat their children horribly and feel like they're a waste of time and space and food and money and things like that, but then not want to let the kids go. Anyway... Something I really like about this so far is I've seen this at least twice in this book, and I like that. Da da da. So then here twice at least, if not more. Oh, is it before each chapter? No. Well, I just saw it again. Do do do. Where did it go? Because I just saw it quite literally again. Okay, so they're for parts, so that's like part three. Anyway, that seems like that'll be a quick and easy read, and I'm intrigued. I can't remember if it's queer or not, but I think it probably is. Um, so I don't know how many books I just showed you. That's probably, let's count them, because this video is already long enough as is. Why not count them too? It's two, three, it's seven. That's 10, 12, 13, 14, 17, 19, 20, 22, 24, 26, 29. If I counted that right, I just showed y'all 29 books. No wonder this video is so long. I don't remember getting 29 books, but, um, anyway, they won't be here for long. My friend Jeremiah is holding most of my books because I can't have too many books here. Um, but I guess the next time I see you will be hopefully whenever my next Owl Creator Rainbow Grey Box get here. Um, but if that doesn't get here until super late, then my May Reads video may be, may be here first. And so far I've read four books and hopefully by the end of tonight I can say five if I can find a book to read really quick. Um, so yeah, thank you for sticking this long, though I doubt many of you did, if any at all. But, you know, you can always pause it and watch it sporadic sporadically. But I don't know, I'm just talking, like you ever just start talking and you start talking it even though you have nothing else to say. Even if it's a video like that that's really long, you don't really want to press end. Sometimes I do that, and I think it's just because I'm lonely and I have nobody to talk to sometimes. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. See y'all whenever my next video is. Um, yeah, okay, bye.